we are now going to create a new controller, the, the chat controller that does everything for chat. And we're going to add two functionalities. We are going to add a new message functionality. So you can actually chat, of course, the main purpose. And we are uh, going to get all messages to see if everything uh, works. All right, I'm going to let you do the work for a moment. Uh, and this is an ideal place to actually pause the video and see if you have grasped the basics of our structure. So I'm going to create a chat controller. You can follow along for now. Chat controller, that's a rest controller. So again, this will handle all our requests for oops, request mapping for the chat. So we are also going to place this on a sub URL called chat. We ha are going to have two functions, namely fun uh, new chat message. That's just going to be placed on the index. So get mapping. Um, sorry, post mapping because we're going to be adding data post mapping. And we have a function called get all messages. Now, a couple of things we need to do, and this is the ideal way of learning. You're going to be pausing this video and writing them for yourself. I will just write them, write down what we need. We, need of course the full flow we are going to be saving uh, messages and chat rooms besides users so that means we need two uh, more repositories you know what i'm going to write everything out first and then i'm going to explain it might be a bit more efficient all right i have written everything out so take a look now it's time for you to start coding now we have built this flow once for the user. We are going to do something similar for uh, the chat messages, only again, realize what you need. So we don't need a service for both of them. Why? Because we're only gonna have one or two functions with logic in it, as in save a new message. That's the only thing we're gonna need. So we're only gonna be needing one chat service. In that chat service, we are going to be placing two functions, the new chat message and the get all messages for that functionality, because we want to get all the messages back and we want to save something. Of course, the saving is going to be done in multiple places. We are gonna be saving a user, no, not a, not, not a user, sorry. We're gonna be saving a message and a chat room if the chat room does not exist. So we are going to be adding two more repositories, basically copies of user, of course, but for messages and for chat rooms, both inherit the GPA repository. And to enable our new chat message, we are going to allow the user to post something specific. We are not gonna be using this one because again, we do not want to expose the name, the types, etc., from our message. And even if you try, you run into so many issues uh, of forced properties, etc. So we're going to create a new DTO or, or a transfer object that is going to be used for our message. And what is what needs to be in there? The chat room name. So for example, Kotlin Nerds user ID one, for example, and the message hi all. If someone sends an object, a JSON with those three parameters, uh, properties to this endpoint, everything should work and we should be able to continue. So pause the video here and when you're done or when you're uh, stuck or almost at the end, you can resume and then we'll create b most of them together. You done? Great. I saw the code that, that you, you were writing. Marvelous. Now. I, sh I can show you how it works. We're gonna do some uh, basic stuff first. We're gonna create the user, rep uh, the re repositories. So again, creating a new interface in that folder for message repository. Again, if you do this a couple of times, this will be second nature again. GPA, what? I, uh, what uh, object are we going to be managing? We're going to be managing a message and long is the type of our ID. Safe, done. Next one, 
Kotlin file. Uh, that's the chat room repository. It's not a class, it's an interface. I misclicked. And it implements GPA. It is a repository. And GPA needs chat room and again long. Chat room import done we have our repositories again it feels good to just say done okay next the chat service chat service in our folder chat service is a class we annotate as such service and I'm going to actually go to the chat controller and take my two functions here. I for, apparently I forgot a get mapping to get them all. And even I'm going to add messages. So if I want all the messages, chat messages, and I will get them. So I copy these, these two functions. I go to the uh, chat service and I add them here. Perfect. That's also done. Service is ready to be the link between the controller and the database. It's also done. And the last thing we need to do is to have a data transfer object and actually start getting data in here. Now the data transfer object is going to be here. Uh, new chat request, new chat request this is a data class and the things we need it I already typed it out probably need to do some more far uh, action not car <laughs> var 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 done so now we need to enter this service chat service nope start with the controller the first controller we allow in the post mapping a request body of this new chat request new chat request voila and we are returning or we are calling the service again using dependency injection Late init far service, uh, chat service. It auto completes beautifully. Auto wired. So we have implemented this service. So I can do service or chat service dot new chat message. And what will I be passing along? The NCR and my service will need to be accept uh, will be a good service and accept this and now we can do our actual logic now again small recap we have created the chat controller we have imported the uh, we have created the service and we have created the other repositories that we are going to be accessing so chat rooms to be saved messages to be saved and users are already in order the next part, of course, in the controller, our first and most important function is the new chat message. We do not allow for the models to be directly used. Again, uh, uh, for security reasons, we do not want to expose all the properties. So we create a new model just for this scenario. So create a user chat request, new chat request. The new chat request has three things that is very readable for any person using our REST API. And if we go into our controller, we forward that to our service where our real logic can actually begin. So strap in the last part of this roller coaster of an application is about to be um, done. So now we're going to actually implement the logic of creating a new chat message. Let's go. So our new chat message, we have so much to, to, to check here. And when I say so much, I mean basically two things. Does the chat room exist? If not, we automatically create a new one. 
if it does, we link the current chat room to the message. Second thing we're going to check is, does the user exist? If not, we're going to error. If it does, we are going to link the user to the message. Once every link has been satisfied, then we're going to save the message and return it to the actual uh, user. So first, I've already written down some comments and we can fill it in. Create the message variable. So again, we are going to create a variable that uh, we are going to be editing throughout the uh, app, sorry function. So new message is uh, from our message model. And message model will allow uh, to have, I think it's a value and a time. So we're going to be adding that in. CR. So again, creating the, me the message with the value that I got from the user here and the current date. The moment we have this, everything okay, we can save all the users and update all the objects. But of course, we need to do some more checks. Again, does the chat room exist? How do we know that? We need access to the database. How do we get access to the database? Through the repository. So again, if I want to use these repositories, and again, spoiler alert, we're going to be using all of them to check for the user, check for the chat room, and actually saving the messages. So I am going to import them or create properties for them all and auto wire them all. So as you might see here, the message repository, probably importing is important, of course. And the last one as well. All these repositories can now be accessed in our uh, message. So imagine again, if you if we had multiple services, we had to go back and forth. Now we just have one service that handles our logic for chatting, which is, of course, if you see the link here um, on the left here, we have a chat room, we need to be able to chat. Does the chat room exist? Well, we're going to retrieve it. Chat room. And how do we want to re retrieve data? We have the ID. Uh, sorry, no, we have the name. And we can do chat room repository dot hmm there is no find name how do we fix that well we create our own function if we go to the chat room repository then we can create a new function and that function can have a custom SQL on it. So let's say we want to find something by name. We're going to create a new function, fun find by name. Doesn't exist, but now we can uh, do that. We want, of course, add a parameter called name, which is a type string. And we are going to be returning something. Now, the moment you do some find by ID, etc., you will notice that you can do chat room. Or um, if it doesn't have any values, we get null. So uh, a, a proper way of handling this in Kotlin is uh, optional. Or it's Java itself, of course. And this will return an optional object that we need to import. <clears throat> and can or cannot have a chat room. This prevents your code from crashing if you have a null value. So this is all good and well. This is just a simple function with no um, content even, uh, but we're going to do some annotations. So first annotation is query, and we're going to specify the SQL query that is going to be executed the moment we actually call this one. So get on your best SQL because select C from, I think I'm going to, from chat room, C where, and then of course, C dot name, as you can see, it automatically completes equals to, and now we need to get this name. Now to get parameters, we can work like this. And then we annotate this parameter with the param tag. That means we need to give it a name, name, just keep it the same, keep it simple. 
And that means that in this SQL query, it will be injecting this string that we pass along into this name. So now you just create a custom function that you can be built infinitely upon. Of course, your SQL knowledge is your bottleneck here and SQL is easily searchable. So we have our new function back to our service. If we want to use this function, find by name. We pass along the name and the name, of course, is located in our request. So our request ncr dot chatroom name. Good for us. We get the chat room. If it's uh, if, if it exists, we need to set it to new message. If it doesn't exist, we're going to create a new one. So if and then this is an optional. So chat room has something called is present. And that's a property. It's a Boolean. If it's present, true, then we do new message dot chat room equals the chat room. This is an optional to get the actual object from the optional we need to use get. So this means that if it retrieves, we can connect it and our message will have one more link to the actual chat room. Now the issue comes, of course, if we don't have it, then we need to create one. So how do we create one? Well, val new uh, new new chat chat room and the new chat room is the saved value that we have so let's say of course chat room repository dot save we're going to save a new one because it doesn't exist yet Kotlin nerds still need to be created uh, and which entity are we going to save? We're going to save a new chat room. Chat room. We need two variables, if I'm not mistaken, the name. And we have the name. Wait, oh, something is going on here. Unresolved reference imported so we can have some auto completion name. And we have the new chat request dot chat room name. So if I were to create a message for Kotlin nerds and it doesn't exist yet, we are going to create the room Kotlin nerds. We have icon URL and let's say default .png. We have a new chat room. Once that is done, we can add that as well to the message. And then we have our chat rooms done. Voila. That's done. That's a, that's our chat rooms. We, if it's present, we couple it to the message. If it's not present, we're going to create a new one and couple that to the, to the message. All right. Does the user exist? Sim, uh, similar thing. So again, I'm going to copy some logic in here. So it goes a bit faster. The user is going to be imported. Uh, that's at CR. And now we get the user repository find by ID, which is also going to be an optional one. And if it's present, then we couple it. If it's not present, we can throw an error. For now, the error throwing is out of the scope. Uh, otherwise, it will get too long. But at this point, imagine you return here. At this point, you can basically create the actual message. And how are we creating this? Well, we use the message repo. So immediately return message repository dot safe. And we have been managing this variable for a while now. And the return type needs to change to message. And now we have a fully functional function. So take a good look because the next point we are going to be testing all of this. Actually, before testing, we almost forgot one thing. We created such a wonderful piece of logic that we forgot the most simple one of them, get all messages. Now, of course, to test, we need to see if our messages are located in our database. So we are going to find all just like before. We are going to return a list of messages. That's all. And in our controller, in our chat controller, we are going to 
call this function return chat service dot get all messages and of course the enclosing type is also going to be a list and here we will add return as well now we are ready to test everything out all right we are back to testing i have rebooted the application and of course we have empty data for now you can do some trick with the applications uh, settings that after you've created your first test cases you can set the application here to validate and then that means the next time you res reset your application unless you've changed something to the core models of your application it will not recreate your database and it will keep the old data there again we don't have anything so we're going to create two users for our test case one oops the post of course we're going to create mike and as you can see that you already already see chat rooms okay interesting and the next part is going to be mike too and we have mike so we have two ids for uh this use case and the next part is of course we're gonna see if we can um i will duplicate this tab might be easier chat we will get and the method is not allowed i oh it's chat messages of course know what you're testing and this will be empty and now the most important thing make sure we can actually save something now what do we need to use we need to do the chat room name chat room name and the chat room would of course be spring boot kotlin nerds not the email the user id let's do a valid one for now again we don't have a lot of error handling and the actual message welcome to the tutorial and let's see what happens perfect now we already get back the full message object again we can trim this down to be cleaner because now we have lots and lots of info we really don't want to expose to our end user for example we automatically get the chat room which is fine enough but we also get the user and that's something we we do not want we, i i do not want to see my email in there or my picture for that matter so in this case we have our data and we really want to create some safety measures in place so that we only return the message itself now let's create two more welcome to the tutorial again uh for the last time sent those are three messages all by the same user let's put one in there of another user well hello there i'm talking to myself right now during a recording which is very weird but again let's see what happens when we retrieve all the messages and now we can get the first message welcome to the tutorial welcome to the tutorial again welcome to the tutorial for the last time again the same uh chat room always and hello there if i were to get this into a front-end site i can do lots and lots with it to um to actually show that on my screen so everything works we're gonna do some small cleanup and then finish this long session uh this video so we are going to create a data transfer object for the message called a message response. And every time we send back a message in our chat, we are going to convert this. So I am going to create a DTO called message response. And that just means whenever I send a message back, I want it to be this type instead of the, the message itself. Uh, I'm going to create some data in here and that means the message itself i need the user id which is important the chat room id and the time itself and then i have enough to get the rest from different endpoints 
Now, message response, of course, the moment I have my message response, I can go to my chat controller and rework it from there. Again, it's the response. The controller is responsible for requests and responses. So now I need the actual um, object in here. So instead of returning this message, I am going to... Um, no, you know what? We'll leave it like this or we can let me check to get all messages. Of course, when we get that back, we just need the ID. So instead of returning this, we are going to return a list. Let's force our type again. List of message responses. And that means var. I'm going to do it in two steps so it's easily readable. But of course, you can do it in one line. Our temp list is going to be get all messages. And I am going to be returning a function call convert list with temp list. I'm going to write this function in below here fun convert list. And what do I get here? I get a list uh, that is a mutable set of messages. Oh, message, sorry. That's this one. So again, temp list, voila. That should do it. And I need to return a list of message responses. message response. So I'm going to be converting this again. I am creating this is some basic Kotlin, of course. Um, message response list is a list of message responses. We have the basics and then we do a simple loop. So for uh, for each message in list, which is our set that, that we have, we can create uh, add. And what are we going to add? We are going to create a message response for each message. So this should work. Let me check. Add the list should work. Message response list one, two, three. All right. And the reason the ad doesn't work, of course, is because I have a list of and not a mutable list of basic mistakes, rookie mistakes, if some might call it. So now I have the ad, and this is a conversion, a conversion list. So again, the let me check what is wrong in here. I am returning a list of message responses. It's a mutable set. If I was not mistaken, this is a mutable set of messages. Mutable list. Ah, that's the issue. This should fix it. Voila. And that means if I retest it now, go to our users. Let's just create uh, mic2 with ID1. And that means that for this user, I will be uh, doing one, one post requests, two post requests, three post requests, so three messages. And now normally, I should get a very condensed version of that back. So this is much cleaner, much easier to work with as well. Uh, if you don't want to expose everything to your end user. Now this is the end of the video. I know it's a long one, but it has multiple parts. And again, you learn uh, lots of different things. If you followed along and coded along, you should know how to work with H2 and GPA and multiple requests, etc. Are there improvements to be made here? Of course you, you can do. So um, you can 
update the users and the chat rooms themselves as well because there is no link at the moment between them. So that's one of them. You can add more functionality, the error handling, etc. But for now, this is the end of this section. I hope to see you all in the next video in this series and I hope you all learned something.